Hello, and welcome to Let Me Tell You a Story podcast, produced by ED Media. Today's story is from the best-selling novel, Cabin Love, Letters of Fate, a love story, written by Latoya Monique Warren. Chapter Break I arrived at the shop early, the inspection code passed for it with flying colors. The men were there installing the chairs to each of the stations. People from the neighborhood were outside looking at the new business in their area. The red and white floors looked dull from the dust of the workers but it was coming along nicely. This shop should be open within two weeks which I felt good about. In the corner sat two of Lacey's photos. I wasn't going to put them up at first. But I loved these two photos and I didn't want to spite her. I loved her, I wanted her. I just didn't want any reminders of her. When I was fucking this white chick Lisa last night at her place, Lacey was on my heart heavy. I hurried up with that pussy. It was tight and moist but it wasn't Lacey. I knew I had to keep busy or I was going to do some foul shit. Pete was meeting me here by noon everything was in its right order. I hired a cleaning company to come in after the chair installation to mop and dust and shine everything. I need this place decent for when man man arrived. His girl walked in first, she was prettier than when I came to the house yesterday. She pulls herself together well. The baby was asleep and man man had a look of concern on his face but he quiet and didn't ask any questions. I had chairs set up for them after showing them a quick glimpse of the shop. So I'm sure you're wondering why I asked you to come here today, I asked looking him in the eye. His girlfriend seemed more concerned than he did with her facial expression, yeah, I won't front I'm a bit curious man man said plainly. Pete and I looked at each other, I brought you and your family down here today because I wanted to offer you the position as lead barber here, and if you do well after 90 days you can manage this shop under Pete's direction until you can master it on your own. Are you serious? Man Man asked then looked at his girl that was rocking the baby. Nah, I called you here today just because I ain't got shit else to do with my time, yes I'm serious, Pete said smiling. I'm confused, Man Man said with his hands open. Look, you did a fucked up thing by stealing from me but your intentions was innocent. You have a new baby, you have experienced loss from your grandmother, and you're a young man trying your best. You were taking towels and soap man man but you were still paying for your booth and you could have taken money from the register and more valuable things, but you didn't. His girl starting smiling, and hugging the baby, as he continued, Listen, my father started out with nothing but a shop and with a wife and two young sons he was a family man, he worked his ass off to provide for us. Sometimes you do things in this world not because you want to, but because you have to. You have a family to look out for, everyone deserve a second chance. Your dedication of hard works has been shown to me, I have connections around here I know. Wolf, I don't know what the hell to say, Man Man's eyes was building up with moisture. Say, thank you, that is enough, I said. He came over to me and gave me a hug. I saw a happy man, and he then went to his girl and kissed her and his baby. Listen, Pete is going to work out all the details for you. In this envelope is a little starter money for you I don't want you taking nothing else from anyone. Pete will mentor you. Anything you need you ask him or me inside the envelope is my direct number never hesitate to use it, walk around the shop again feel it out, I said as I passed him the envelope. Wolfman I can't, thank you enough man, my family thanks you. You know I heard you do good by people but I thought it was all just talk. I'm grateful for this man, man man said excitedly. I saw a light of happiness in this young man. Yesterday at his house he was broken a sad and today I changed his whole life. My father used to tell me that it was nothing like being good to people especially when they are in need. I believe this young kid will do well because someone believed in him he has no choice, I don't give third chances. Thank you Mr. Wolf, his girlfriend said with a southern drool and a big smile. Keep him in line, I said and winked at her. Pete I'm out, hit me up later, I said and left. I felt good about what I just did which means I know I did the right thing. The fact of the matter is, too many young black men out here is suffering. If I could offer that opportunity to every one of them I would, but for right now, man man got that opportunity. My driver dropped me off and once I walked into my house Lacey's face was all I could see. I haven't heard from her over a month. No text, and no calls. She really made her decision, my ego was crushed. I called China she hung up on me the first two times, the third time she heard me out. My driver went to pick her up. Lacey's Chapter Reconnecting Bradley was on an overnight business trip in Chicago, it was a relief to me because it's been hard balancing my emotions around him lately. He has been more distant lately, I don't know if I am responsible for this distance with him now. 
He catches me in deep thoughts when I'm not aware of it, each time I give him a different response. We haven't really been having sex like before. It's been two months since I gave Wolf the letter and the summer is approaching slowly. I have been better than I have but I still ache for him. I look at Bradley sometimes and dislike him for being here, I wish he wasn't. I wish I could just have my way but I can't. By Bradley being gone it gave Shy and me time together, we are tight but she adores Bradley so I took her shopping to buy new summer clothes and I went to look at a couple of properties to open my own gallery. My clientele has picked up, and I'm going to need help with the work I have booked. I remember Wolf telling me how easy it can be getting space you just have to know what you want and where you want to be located. I have Mikey as my traveling assistant, he's a young kid with great vision and if I get the new space I will offer him a permanent position to work with me. I would also need to hire a secretary to handle all my appointments, and other administrative things. It was sounding so good to me every time I thought about it, and it took my mind off of Wolf. Tonight Mrs. Krause will watch Cheyenne for me. My best friend Melissa asked me to go out with her, and being that I am in a funk from all the events in the past two months, I agreed to go. Cheyenne and I was in the ice cream parlor, we sat in a corner booth her big brown eyes was so innocent and she was so smart, Mama, can I ask you a question? Sure baby you can ask me anything you like, shoot. Is it wrong for two men to be together? Cheyenne asked. I was shocked at her question, I didn't understand how or why she would ask a question at six years old. I was dumbfounded. Shy, why would you ask something like that, where did you even get that idea from? She shrugged her shoulders and took another scoop of ice cream, I was just asking mama. Is it something that you saw on TV? I asked feeling confused. She didn't answer me at first, I asked you a question young lady, I said, speaking firmly to her. No mama, just forget it I wanted to forget she asked the question and didn't want to finish my ice cream at this point. Shy and Elizabeth, if it's something you've been doing or watching I need for you to tell me the truth right now. No mama. Just some kids at school was talking, that's all she said as she took more ice cream from her cup. That somehow made me feel a little better, kids with their explosive minds. It's scary to think the things they are exposed to. Mama, do you love Brad Brad? Another question that caught me off guard. Of course I do shy. You know Bradley is very important to me. Important is different than love mama. I was stuck with that one. You're right, I love Bradley Cheyenne. Why would you ask that question? Sometimes Brad Brad seems so sad, when I ask him what's the matter he has the same look on his face that you do right now, she said so innocently. I didn't know how to respond. Well sometimes adults have a lot of things on their mind and it's hard to keep inside our hearts so we may look sad sometimes like you do when you can't watch TV past your bedtime. She thought about what I said. Oh, hey, I understand now, she smiled. The next time you see Bradley sad just give him a hug, hugs make people feel so much better. That sounds like a good idea mama, I will do that, she said sounding excited. We finished up in the parlor and we went to look at some spots, I liked one location but I wasn't impressed with the other one. My realtor Jeff told me that he will keep me posted on any new listing coming up. The drive home was heavy for me. I couldn't get the thoughts of what Cheyenne was saying to me earlier. But I needed to clear my thoughts before going out tonight with Melissa, she was a firecracker and the most honest person I know. If it will hurt your feelings she will tell you, but she also encouraged and motivates me at the same time in all aspects. I was scheduled to bring Shy over to Mrs. Kraus, by 7 p.m. that would give me time to get dressed in peace. I can put my music on, and just focus. I wasn't the dress-up type of woman, I like being comfortable with yoga pants or sweats on but since I left Wolf I just want to feel sexy. Tonight I am going out of my element, I picked out a fitted all-black dress, with the highest blue pumps I had in my closet. I matched some jewelry I had to let my hair flow. The season is changing, so the nights are warm, but not so warm that my hair will frizz up. Once I was done, and looked in the mirror, I was impressed at how beautiful I looked. I would like to say I haven't been horny, but I am not talking to no man tonight. I am engaged, and I will not create another emotional disaster. Tonight is about all fun, period. Melissa and I was to meet up at a hall on Frisk Street by 10 p.m., I found a parking spot, and texted her to see if she was there yet. To my surprise she was, and gave me direction what to do when entering. 
The place was beautiful it was a five-star hotel, and top-notch. As I approached the front brown people were standing outside, some was smoking cigarettes, while others were just talking. Everyone was dressed to impress, so I felt better in what I had on. As I was approaching, a tall gentleman with fair skin, and looking very handsome approached me. Hey beautiful. Can I holla at you for a minute? He asked, rubbing both his hands. His hands were nicely manicured, his teeth were white, and his height was nice. I found myself looking up to him. Oh, I'm here to meet my friend, maybe later, I said politely. I kept walking, and heard other dudes squawking at me. It felt good to get the attention, but I was focused on having fun. Remember you said that, love, he hollered behind me. Melissa was waiting at the top of the stairs looking beautiful as always. Melissa was light skin, with chinky eyes. She was thick all over, blessed with big breast, and booty to match. She loved weaves, and every time I seen her, it was a different one on her head. She was always put together so well. I envied her style. Look at Miss Thang, damn girl you look wonderful she said, louder than I wanted her to say. You look good too girl, as always I said while touching her new weave. Girl, there are so many men in here. I feel like a kid in a candy store. And they are men too. Just big, and brawny, with money in the pockets. I laughed at Melissa she was always so overdramatic. So whose party is this anyway, the place is beautiful. She and I walked towards a table, and sat down, girl it's a friend of mine friend's party. I met him like two months ago, I know he's a player but he buys me whatever I want. He has the prettiest green eyes and, the sex is on point. When he invited me, I was like hell yeah, it's free, and all the drinks and food are too, she laughed. I shook my head, I hear that. The tall guy from downstairs came toward me, but was interrupted by a dark-skinned big booty female, that looked like she wanted to devour him. I was glad she stopped him. He was nice looking, and I just didn't want to get distracted. Melissa and I went to the bar, and got drinks. I like the taste of my coconut vodka and pineapple juice. I haven't drunk it since the cabin. It was inviting, as I was thinking about Wolf, a sadness came over me. I drank my drink down real fast. Damn lace. Take it easy girl. That was fast. I'm going to get another one, I got up and walked over to the bar again. This time, while my drink was being made, the first drink gave me courage to look at the crowd. It was many black beautiful men and women in here tonight. Whoever's party this was had money for sure, and taste. The decorations were all blue and silver. The tables were set up nicely, and the dance floor was huge. I loved to dance, and I was feeling like I wanted to start right now. I looked and saw a lady that looked familiar to me. I couldn't remember where I saw her before, but I know I knew her. She was at a distance. Once I got my drink, I was back sitting with Melissa. She was now talking to a nice-looking brown-skinned man, with an expensive watch on and thick lips. I sat down and smiled at her and lifted my drink in the air, can I have this dance a familiar voice said to me. I looked up and seen the handsome man from outside. I was feeling tipsy so I didn't think at all. I just jumped up. Lead the way he looked surprised, as slow song blurted through the speakers, which I didn't mind. He held me close, and started a conversation, I gave him my name, and what I did for a living. He seemed like a nice guy. Another slow song came on, and we continued to dance. We were close, he smelled good, and I was feeling those drinks. I started to get hot between my legs. Oh I see my brother now I heard him say, I ignored him, and was just feeling the mood. I want to introduce you to my brother Lacey, my eyes were still closed, but as I opened them, Wolf was standing before me, and he looked good enough to eat. I started to feel sick. Wolf was looking at me with a blank look on his face. Am I missing something here brother? The handsome one spoke. I coughed twice. This is Lacey Grant, Wolf spoke looking directly at me. My heart was palpating really fast. Wolf what are you doing here? I slowly asked. This is one of my friends, and business partner's party we are throwing for him, Wolf spoke looking me dead in the eyes. Wait, this is the infamous woman Lacey? The handsome one spoke, laughing out loud. I realized in feeling so tipsy I never asked him his name, and he never offered it. I looked toward the table, 
and Melissa was eyeing me down and she started to get up, and come towards us when she the look on my face. Lace is everything okay? Melissa said while looking at Wolf with lustful eyes. Um, yeah Melissa this is Wolf and I'm assuming Kem is your name, I stated, looking at handsome. Kem smiled at me, while checking Melissa out, beauty with beauty, Kem said as he gawking at Melissa. Well I'm going to leave you two to your dance, Wolf spoke still looking at me. I didn't know what to say, as he was walking away, a beautiful mixed woman approached him with all her ass, and titties out in a dress, that looked painted on her. She looked me directly in the eye. Wolf baby you ready to take our seats, she spoke confidently. My heart dropped as they walked off. I wanted to run up to him, and kiss him. I missed him so much. What the hell was that about? Melissa said confused. I will tell you later. Right now, I am going to finish my dance, I went to grab Kem, but he pulled back. Whoa, you are one beautiful woman Lacey that's a fact. But by the look on my brother's face, I'm going to sit this one out. Blood first, I'm sure y'all will work this out. I looked at him surprised, well okay then, I said, and walked away. Melissa was right behind me. Okay girl I'm guessing that was Wolf, oh goodness Lacey are you okay girl, Melissa said. I'm good, I'm here now, and I'm not leaving, I came out to have a good time, and that is what I'm going to have. When I looked toward Wolf. He was talking to a few people that approached his table. He was an important man. People approached him wherever he went. I'm going to the bathroom. I'm coming with you, just in case, Melissa was side by side, walking with me. I told Melissa about Wolf from day one, I didn't speak to her about the letter and the ending. I filled her in quickly in the restroom, and now she understood the whole thing. We can leave Lace if you want, Melissa spoke empathically. No dear we are not leaving I came to have fun, and I will. This is Wolf's turf, but I will have my fun tonight. He is well occupied, I said while adding more lipstick to my half-painted lips. On our way back to the table, a nice tall chocolate man approached me. He looked like Morris Chestnut. Can I have this dance? He asked politely. Well of course you can, I said nicely. When I looked over at Wolf, his eyes was on me. Morris, and I too stepped it elegantly. He was handsome, with a nice smile. I prayed for a slow song to play, and it did. It brought Morris and I, closer together. The chick with Wolf grabbed him to dance, and they joined the dance floor. It was awkward. I wanted to keep my eyes off of them. When she was so close to him, I felt like I was on fire. I excused myself for Morris, and I went to stand outside. Melissa didn't see me exit. She was being entertained by another sexy man. I stood outside to get my thoughts together. My mind was racing. I couldn't believe Wolf, or is it, I couldn't believe myself. I made the decision, and he has moved on in his life. I was crushed. I wanted to leave, but then I would look defeated, and I am not going to give my power away. I wanted him. I wanted to go upstairs and snatch him straight out that half his arms. And she is so damn pretty. My mind was racing. It was a beautiful summer's night, the air was clear and crisp. I could have taken nice pictures of this scenery, but I didn't have my camera on me. Small world. I heard his voice behind me. My heart thumbed. I guess, was all that would come out. I turned to face him. You look sexy, never seen you dressed up like this, he said looking straight at my legs. Wolf stood in a confident stance, he was strong his face resembled a wolf. That wasn't how he got his nickname from, it came from his father. He told me the story when he was a little boy, all the kids followed him around the neighborhood wanting to be his friend. He was a natural leader his father told him, all his life. You're like a wolf, always leading the pack son his father would tell him, and the name stuck from then. Thank you, I responded looking into his eyes. You may want to get back to your girlfriend, I snapped. He took a deep breath, and put his hands in his pocket. He was dressed to impress with black slacks on and short sleeve button-down shirt that exposed his masculine belt. The tattoo of the cross with his father's name showed, his hair was neatly cut, and his cologne was nice, I checked him out from head to toe. You made the choice Lacey. You did, he said agitated. What the hell was I supposed to do Wolf, my life was in disarray, I didn't want to hurt anyone else any further, that was hard for me, my eyes tearing up. 
He just stared at me, you're beautiful to me, he said. I started to cry. I didn't want to do this with him right now, I wanted to fuck him right there on the steps. My heart was breaking. I can't do this, I started walking to my car. Wolf didn't chase me, or even call my name. I made it to my car, and called Melissa. Her phone rang out to voicemail. Hey it's me, I'm in my car please, call me, I was crying. Melissa called me back and made it to the car. She told me to go home, and she understood the situation. She even offered to come home with me, but I declined, and she wouldn't take no for an answer. I felt horrible spoiling her night like this. When Wolf is involved, it's never good. Melissa jumped in my car and said we will come back to get her car later. Melissa was driving. I was too upset to do it. I couldn't believe he didn't even come to see if I was okay or not. He must have put his guards up and really put us to rest. I was angry with him, I was angry with myself. I wanted to scream, but I stayed cool. We made a stop at Melissa's. She needed to stop home to get some things, she was going to stay the night with me. With Bradley away and Cheyenne at Mrs. Krause's house, I really didn't want to be alone. It took her forever it seemed. When we pulled up in my driveway a black SUV sat across the street. It looked like Wolf's driver. I was half drunk and fully heartbroken with makeup that ran under my eyes. The back door opened to the black SUV. Lacey he yelled. I turned and saw Wolf standing in the middle of the street. Come take a ride with me, he said. I stood still. Now that's some Romeo shit right there, and he fine as hell too lace. You better go with that man. Girl what are you waiting for? Bud, I messed up your night already Mel. She cut me off, blah blah blah, listen I'm your best friend, and I will always be your best friend. But this is the man you love girl. Go ahead. I know how to get in your house, and raid your fridge, she chuckled. Mel, I said feeling guilty. Go, she pointed her finger. I love you Mel, I said happily, and I turned and gave my best sexy strut to Wolf. Hey everyone, it's Author Everlast. I want to thank you for listening to Let Me Tell Your Story podcast. Tune in for the next episode. God bless and be safe.